Welcome to this podcast on software technology. My name is Christoph Ebert. I'm the Managing Director of Vector Consulting Services, and I'm going to guide you through this podcast. A specific topic today in this um, version is the requirements engineering tools. It's about software technology, and it is about uh, showing also some uh, experiences with what we are doing in technology transfer together with our partner, IEEE Software. IEEE, as you're certainly aware, is the world's biggest organization for computer science, software engineering, and related topics. And I'm responsible since many years for a department which is called Software Technology. And we are taking benefit here to show some recent insight into topics which are hot in the community and which we typically publish on this bi-monthly basis uh, in IEEE software with some five to 10 pages uh, each month. So the topic here, requirements engineering tools, means we have evaluated together with some experts in this domain about what are the experiences, what are the needs in terms of software engineering tools. Now, being ourselves in the good position to be one of the real worldwide recognized requirements engineering experts since many years, having published a lot in the conferences, in the journals, also our own book, which is uh, in Engl uh, in, uh, even used in China as a, a master book for requirements engineering. Um, and in our consulting discipline, introducing such tools continuously, we brought in a lot of background for the empirical part. We used also experts from um, university uh, to consolidate the results to do the interviews. And uh, here's what we have in a nutshell. The journal appeared in May 21. You can find the details with the link, which is here on the bottom, which points to the homepage of IEEE software. I will structure this uh, podcast into three parts. One is, what is the challenge with requirements engineering tool? What is the market? Two, what tools do we recommend? What experiences do we have for requirements engineering tools? Three, what can you learn for your own practice in terms of change management, introducing a requirements engineering tool? Number one, looking into what are the challenges with requirements engineering tool? What is the market? Now, the challenge with requirements engineering tool is related to the market. It's a huge amount of tools which are out there. Uh, we counted in a bigger study a while ago, uh, more than 100 tools, ranging from free and open software, FOSS, into real expensive tools such as DOORS. And <clears throat> if there was no market, there would be no tools. That means there's a market for all that. Many of you might even still have experiences with an um, old fashioned approach like using a Microsoft Word or using an Excel for requirements engineering. That's certainly definitely not a good solution because you cannot really maintain traceability. You don't have timestamps. You have many other disadvantages, no collaboration, uh, you, you name it. I mean, uh, it's very difficult. Nevertheless, we've seen industry still companies using office tools and for those of you who are in the office world, uh, maybe you also use this podcast to look into, is it really worth this additional overheads which you have with office tools compared to professional tools? But there are other challenges. For instance, you want to connect such a tool for traceability purpose to other. One typical challenge would be horizontal traceability. You have requirements in a tool, you want to connect those. We want to have traceability to the respective test cases. Maybe you are just interested to, uh, to do a test from requirements engineering, TDRE. We had recently a podcast on TDRE. So some of you might be aware. It's definitely worth the effort because it gives you consistency from the requirement to the test. It gives you consistency also in terms of changes, and it allows you to have a requirements-driven approach towards visibility with respect to market and with respect to the needs which there is in terms of customer. We had a customer recently who had forgotten, quote, quote, um, they were just not 
able to manage that in the time uh, to deliver some features to the customer in a package. And the result was a quite angry customer reaction with demand for immediate rework, which cut short uh, Christmas holidays for some of those um, engineers. And certainly that is something which gives a not so good impression to the market. In other words, requirements need to be decided upfront in terms of priorities, but you should not in a late state or uh, situation decide, well, we don't have the time, we cannot deliver. And the same holds for testing. Something which has a high priority needs to be tested. That is why we recommend that you start even with testable requirements and put those in your repository, not write a requirement during the elicitation and later on have to translate it in a cumbersome second step into a test case. This is certainly extra work, extra effort, not our recommendation. Second is also the vertical traceability. We want to connect the abstract market requirements to the product requirements to the implementation, the component requirement, or put it into different words. We want to connect the value to the function, to the information model. Also, this needs a very close traceability, which is far away from what you can do with office tools, which is also far away with what you can really do with uh, free available software. And that's exactly why tools like DOORS, PTC, Polarion, uh, et cetera, have their real value in professional engineering. And I guess it's clear we talk here about professional engineering. Now, having said that, let me move into the second topic. How does the market really looks like from an evaluation perspective? You see in that picture in the middle, and I deliberately choose that picture for this uh, podcast, uh, that we have here two dimension. We look into the technology perspective and we look into the uh, user perspective. And what we see on the lower left, that means low technology, low user benefit, this is of course the office tools. And Excel is excellent with respect to just making sure that you capture the requirements initially. It's a good prototype tool for small software, throwaway software, et cetera. As soon as it gets bigger, the Excel gets out of control. No consistency, not even a spelling checker. Now, some people move into Word and Excel as possible, but also not a good recommendation because you have dual source. Uh, and again, all the disadvantages with lack of timestamp, lack of collaboration, et cetera. Now, some people argue collaboration is possible with some uh, platforms uh, like open collaboration. But again, yes, that's true in theory. Those of you who have tried, that doesn't matter really whether it was Google Wave or in other applications, including Dropbox and all that, they realize it's still cumbersome, it's slow, and you have the things in the cloud. That means, in the worst case, not even being able to use it because you have no connectivity. So that's no good solution. Now, if we move to the right, we see more technology focus. Tools like Jira is already quite interesting to use because they give a good change handling. Change requests, service requests, incidents, they all fit very nicely. That's why the bubble size is rather big. Many companies use this approach. We see also other tools in this domain where we have, uh, let's say, dedicated tools, which are in a way um, misused for requirements engineering because they were initially uh, tailoring and uh, targeting another, uh, let's say, use case. And then we have in the upper right, tools which are part of an ALM or PLM environment, that means product lifecycle management, application lifecycle management, and in doing so have a quite nice traceability. Traceability and connection to other tools can be achieved in two ways. One is you buy a complete suite like the rational suite, which uh, covers tools like DOORS, Rhapsody, et cetera. Nice, as long as you like the suite. Not so nice if you need to migrate because you're locked in. So our recommendation is federation of tools, which is typically done with Eclipse, with notification mechanisms, et cetera. And in this domain, you see tools which you can also connect with other tools. We ourselves, some 10, 15 years ago, pushed extremely hard for requirements interchange format, RECIF, because this is the vehicle how you can federate different tools, how you can also export import requirements and get into other tools. 
Now, of course, this is all things which you don't get with Excel and Word, but uh, I don't think we talk any more about those. Um, for other tools, it's a selection criteria. If you want to share requirements, if you collaborate, if you want to use a variety of other tools like test management, modeling, et cetera, then RecIF is mandatory because it's an universal XML-based interface for export-import of requirements. There are three different levels in the RecIF. I'm not going to this detail, but the lowest level means you can export-import ASCII. The second level means that you have uh, semantics behind, and the third level, in simple speaking, means that you have also possibilities to um, export-import um, enhancements like pictures, tables, et cetera. Now, for those of you who are an agile environment, you might ask, do we need these heavy tools? Well, you can go with Jira, you can go with others, but as soon as you have variants, as soon as you have longer life cycle, as soon as you have legal liability in, in terms of product liability, it's good to have the bigger tool because it gives you more robustness, more security in terms of uh, being future safe. And that is again where the tools in this upper right corner uh, come into the picture, which is uh, a Polarion, which is now part of <clears throat> the PDC environment. Um, we have the DOORS, which is part of the IBM Rational Suite. We have also tools like Prevision, which is um, a standalone tool, which includes requirements and modeling. And uh, we have also the Quality Center, which evolved from the test into the requirements. All of those have their pros and cons, but essentially are the baseline for professional requirements engineering tool usage. Now, my third topic was how do you use it for your own benefit? Don't assume a requirements tool is the solution. It's just one part. Introducing a requirements tool is a change project. You have to identify how you use it, workflows, information models, connection to other tools, IT infrastructure, um, a lot of things related to security, et cetera. So this is not peanuts. You might rely on external experiences uh, like what we are doing, what others are doing in terms of avoiding a long and costly learning curve. What is also important with respect to the good usage of requirements tools is that the tool is only as good as the user. The fool with the tool remains a fool, as we say. And that means I have seen doors being used as a repository for Excel requirements templates. I think it's nuts, but the people had not much education. And so they used the doors, which was suddenly mandatory in their company and did not really use it well. Other important topic is if you go to the cloud, which for instance, doors and G allows other, other tools also, make sure that the cloud is robust, that you have connectivity. Those of you who are continuously on the road might not want to use cloud-based tools. We had just recently a case where a company was in a security issue and they cut off every connectivity of their uh, computers, making all cloud application worthless. This will increase in the future. Ask on my opinion, I'm not in favor of any cloud solution because we know exactly what happens, which is big security issues, big deb debates about which server is used, connectivity poor, performance poor, Sharing could work, but not always. And from that perspective, make sure if you have a solution that at least you have a mirroring onto your own laptop that you can work on a variant, if you want an ad hoc variant, and later on uh, connect it again and merge it. Branch and merge, merge is the answer if you want to go in the cloud, but make sure you know what you're doing. This being said, let me summarize. There's a wealth of tools. You need to evaluate with your own business background the introduction of a requirements engineering tool is a change project. And for those of you interested to learn more, I invite you to our vector forum, which is always the last Thursday in June. So this year, 24 of June, we have nice presentations from Mercedes-Benz, Porsche, Siemens, Volkswagen, ZF, and others. And we will share exposure experiences from medical, from automotive, from IT projects. So use it to also learn about software driven innovation about technologies, it's a good way to network. It's online, it's free, it's global. And that being said, wish you good success with your technologies, with your sharing, with your requirements engineering, and don't hesitate to contact us with questions at www.vector.com consulting. Good success, stay tuned.
Thank you.